Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Golgari Elves. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of our standard gameplay series where we play a new deck every single day. Today is a special one because it's Dark Elves, Golgari Elves, however you want to put it. Uh, it's a really interesting deck, and this is the one that I have created. Now, keeping in mind, there are some oddities here. We'll talk about those as we go through uh, because I wanted some big finishers, and I feel like that's really where the deck doesn't usually overperform. Uh, and so we're going to try this out and see how it goes, but obviously, it is an elves build uh, and so we're taking advantage of a lot of the cards that we would normally suspect we've got the war master we've got the avenger not all of the versions run this uh the avenger here but this gives us some card draw which is really good in an elves deck if we need it uh i'm also running two elder fang disciples not 100% sure on the, the skew here, but the idea is that this can get a card out of hand. And so even if it does die later on, we hopefully get to draw a card off of it and the opponent has to discard a card. So very good there. Uh, the Gala Greeters, of course, is just a great addition from the new set. Uh, again, War Master is here because not only does it spit out extra tokens, but it can also finish the game. Elves you control get plus two, plus two, and death touch until the end of the turn. Very, very good. Now, keeping in mind that uh, we do have to ramp into that. Now, the way we do that is with Jaspara Sentinel, uh, hopefully the treasure tokens off of the Gallag Readers. Uh, we do have Canopy Tactician. This is just a great way uh, to, to ramp as well as bolster up the board. We're also running Tyvar Kel. Again, not a card that you always see but i do think is a very good one and works very well with one of our big finishers which is vorinclex now i know this is not an elf uh i get it but the important thing here is that this actually works really really well with tyvar kel plus it shuts down a lot of what the opponent might be doing it also works well with the gallag readers it's just a really good card all around titan of industry is going to hopefully shields up for us a little bit we can throw a shield counter on something we can also gain some life which is pretty good in this deck because again it, it's pretty common for us to get to a low life total fairly quickly uh we can also destroy artifacts and enchantments and obviously that's pretty useful depending on the the matchup we're in uh we do of course have a, tur a turn timber symbiosis to help us out as well and and then for some removal, Blood Chief's Thirst. Uh, but I think that's pretty much it. We do have a Besteju uh, as a way to kind of deal with some uh, opposing artifacts, enchantments, lands, whatever. We also have Lair of the Hydra and Hive of the Eye Tyrant, depending on what we need. So it's going to be interesting, guys. I, I don't really know what to expect here. I have played a game or two with it, but uh, and it was actually a really fun one. But we, uh, we don't really know what to expect. Generally, Elves isn't that good in standard, so I'm kind of curious to see how this one actually goes. Uh, oh, one thing I did forget to mention, Harold is here. We got Harold. That was my granddad's name. Uh, but this actually gives us the opportunity to kind of dig further into our deck as well, which is quite nice. So all that said, we're going to give this a shot, guys. Hopefully we'll get through more than one game. Unfortunately, the last video we didn't, but let's see what we can do. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty easy keep. We have two lands, which is usually what you want uh, because we do have the Elvish War Master. If we get one more land, that gives us Herald. And it looks like our opponent's on a mulligan as well, which is quite reasonable for us. Uh, hmm. I mean, I guess we'll just go with the... Let's go Lair of the Hydra. We're not going to Blood Chief's Thirst this Shambling Gas. That is kind of a frustrating card for us because obviously they can, you know, deadly dispute it or do whatever, but uh, we'll see what we can do here. Uh, let's throw you out for black. Um, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and Elder Fang Disciple. The reason I'm doing this, they can obviously kill this and it's fine. It's not the end of the world. I don't want to throw a War Master out into a deadly dispute. And this still means they have to discard a card, which is pretty good for us. We could have very easily done something a little bit different here, but um, I think this will work out okay. What did they discard? Just a land. Okay. So this is going to be a Blood on the Snow deck, which is a little scary for us. They're going to meat hook for one. Wow. Uh, interesting. Okay. Very interesting. Okay, let's do this. I'm just going to Herald here. Uh, this again replaces itself, which is really important for us. But also, uh, if they do, you know, blood on the snow or do something crazy like that, it's fine. Uh, this also means if they don't have any removal, they have to play two things just to block it, uh, which they have. So good on them. 
All right. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so now we've got some options. Uh, let's see what we want to do. Um, hmm. We can do some, like, really basically forcing them to have some stuff here. So I'm actually going to go this route. Let's kill this. That does mean they, of course, get to pull something here, which isn't great for us, but it's not the end of the world. Um, but we're kind of going to force them into having, like, a sweeper. Uh, or at least that's the plan. Let's go ahead and do this. That spits out another one. And this can free attack because it does have menace, just so uh, that's abundantly clear. There's the environmental sciences, which does mean they probably don't have a sweeper unless it's a meat hook, uh, I suppose. But it looks like they don't, which is phenomenal. So that's good for me. Um, all right. Man, I do wish we could Vorinclex this turn, but uh, this will be fine. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, all right, hold on. So we could tap this. One, two, three, four, five. So we could get Vorinclex down this turn. Hmm. <laughs> Let's do this. Um, wait a second. Nope, 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 nope. That was wrong. Oh no, that was so wrong. Oh no, oh. Oh, all right, yay! <laughs> we didn't have double green. That was so stupid, but we still won. All right, cool, let's jump into game two. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for our next game. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty easy. Keep let's go for it. Um, I like this. Uh, we've got the two mana, which we need right off the bat. That's not bad either. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna just go ahead and run this out. We've actually got three mana with the symbiosis, but I think this works out pretty well. We'll see what the opponent is looking to do. They've got a professor, that's fine. <clears throat> They've got environmental sciences, cool. Um, I'm gonna go Gallag Readers. It just sets up quite nicely, and I will attack in. If they wanna block with the professor, that's kind of fine. I'd rather go ahead and get some damage in. Uh, this could very well just be a basic, like, control deck, uh, with the, the tech with the lessons, so we'll see what they end up doing here. Oh, it's Bant? Oh, interesting. Oh! Oh! Uh, so many options. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's do this first. Um... Let's go for the treasure token here. I do want to open up some extra plays on the upcoming turns here. So, oh, they had Volgi. Fascinating. Uh, we'll pay three, I think. This opens up the Canopy Tactician uh, on the following turn. And I'm just actually going to throw a counter here. And I will not attack. I think next turn we throw Canopy Tactician down and then really start to go crazy. I would love an Avenger. Uh, okay, so they're gonna take out the Gallag Readers. Sure. Uh, that's fine. I mean, it's not great, but it's fine. Let's Canopy Tactician. Uh, let's go ahead and Blood Chief's Thirst this. Um, and we're gonna force the issue. I think we're just gonna attack in. We get something back if they do block, which is fine by me. If not, they take six. Six is a reasonable amount of damage that they're going to have to take. They could very easily have like a snakeskin veil or a safekeeping or whatever, but I think this works out okay. Um, and we'll see what happens. Okay, cool. Uh, we can pretty easily deal with that. That's fine. We actually can deal with basically any big creature or planeswalker that they play at this point, so I'm feeling okay about that. <clears throat> yeah, uh, we can definitely take care of that. Great card, for sure, but... Um, did they venture, or are they just deciding which which dungeon to go to, perhaps? Um, yeah, so we can just Blood Chiefs, there's that, then get a basically free attack in. Um, 
Pardon me one second while I text my wife and let her know that I'm recording. Alright. Opponent deciding very heavily on which dungeon I assume to go to. Um, again, the Blood Chief's Thirst will take care of the Nadar, uh, which is really nice because we kind of need to shut down the Venture mechanic uh, as well as the the three three being in the way um awesome all right cool uh land's good i'll go ahead and put the second black there so that way we can do this without utilizing the oh actually yeah that was a good point if we didn't draw second black we wouldn't have been able to do that so that was actually really important uh easy attack in with everything there's really no reason not to here and basically, we're just kind of hoping for something big. Like, if we get, like, a Vorinclex, great. If we get a Titan of Industry, phenomenal. If we get... Even Tyvar would be okay. It's not great, but... Um, I mean, they're they're facing down a good bit of damage now. So, um, if they play a creature, obviously, they gain some life. That's fine. All right. Cool. Get another environmental sciences. It looks like they were pretty stuck on land here. Um, I'm curious as to what this deck really is, though, because it seems like they just have a bunch of kind of random stuff in the deck, which is perfectly fine, but i just curious, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, we just attack with everything. We have the, the layer of the Hydra, which, while it doesn't have Trample, is still a very important card for us. Um, yeah, that's fine. This is annoying, but not the end of the world. Um, and again, because we have the Lair of the Hydra, they are still on a pretty reasonable clock. If they have a Doomscar, it would suck, but it's not gonna, like, completely dig them out of this. Um, yeah. That's fine. Again, annoying, but not the end of the world. One, two, three, four. Sure. So we get to do this. I'm just going to attack with everything. Again, we're kind of just in the camp of, like, we we just deal as much damage as possible, I think. Um, they are kind of forced to block the lair. Excellent. All right, down to two. Um, hopefully they just don't have anything. If they sweep, it's fine. We have lair. If they play a big thing, I think it's still fine because we've, we've gone wide enough that I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, yeah, okay. Well, that's actually really good. That does dig them out of it enough that it's frustrating because they get a creature back. Um, two creatures back, in fact. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, never mind. Uh, we just win. Uh, they can block four of the damage, but this has trample. So, yep, there we go. We got the win. Awesome, guys. Let's move on to the next game. All right, guys, here we are for our third game, and interesting hand. I think we try it. I'm not, like, sold that this is the right call, but I think we'll go for it. Um, it's a little awkward because of the Death Cap Glade. That's one thing I would suggest. There are a couple things I would suggest. There are multiple builds with these kinds of elf-focused decks, or even just creature-focused decks like this. One of the things to think about is that you could very easily... Um, hmm. Yeah, I'll go this route, then. Uh, you could very easily, like, build in Tamiyo Safekeeping, Snakeskin Veil, a more, like, streamlined quote-unquote mana base where you're not focused on, like, the multicolor so much. Um, I purposefully kind of went for the multicolor, um, but the idea being that you could avoid some of these tapped land scenarios, which is perfectly reasonable. Um, I am going to go for this, and then, of course, we'll go for... I think a 1-1 one, one counter. Um, and I'll happily attack in. I don't really see a reason not to. I'm not super worried about this, um, personally. I'm sure they are going to have burn and crazy stuff, so I'd rather set up for future turns with the Gallagreeders giving us that treasure token. And, um, you know, potentially drawing some cards off of this uh, Skinfar Avenger would be helpful. If you think about it, too, the Gallagreeders draw or a gain to life equates to basically two cards off of the avenger which is um in terms of life total which is perfectly reasonable to consider it in that realm so interesting hmm. 
well. I think I just set this up again. I think again, I'd I'd really rather have the uh, the mana and the card draw potential here. We've got some big stuff to do, which is great, but we do need some extra lands here. So seems kind of reasonable to to go for this, and they're probably going to want to answer this Avenger as best they can. Um, potential that we should have gone for a 1-1 counter on the Gallag Readers just to get out from under a meat hook, but looks like they don't have that here anyway, so not a big deal. Uh, that's really good. Let's see, double strike whenever you cast... Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, we can go multiple different ways now. Hmm. I think I go this way. Uh, let's... Let's do this. Um, again, not positive on that, but I think that's what we'll do. And we'll just, we'll just hold up. Um, yeah. I think this will be okay. This isn't a... I mean, obviously this kind of sucks. Whenever you cast a return target non-legendary creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So they can basically start to bring back that unlucky witness, which will... Certainly be annoying, but not the end of the world. Um, I'm kind of trying to get to the Titan of Industry, which is part of why I'm going for this play. Alternatively, of course, we do just have Boring Flex next turn for a little bit less mana, which is good. So we'll we'll see what we need to do. Double Boring Flex, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I go this route. Um. Let's throw a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Uh, we'll shield counter and destroy. So we're going to destroy the wedding announcement. We're going to shield counter up the Gala Greeters and then throw a 1-1 one, one counter on it. And then I'll attack. I could shield counter up the Titan of Industry, but um, I weirdly think the, the Gala Greeters is kind of more important right now. Um, that's fine. We get this off the field. They can introduction to Annihilation something here, I'm sure, uh, if they'd like to. But if that's their whole turn, you know what I mean? Like, if, if the whole turn is spent... Wow, they don't even have it. They have Necrotic Fumes. Um, or maybe they're doing that plus something else. I don't know. But the point is, like, we've got the treasure tokens to just drop Vorinclex and start really dealing some massive damage. So, like, it's kind of good regardless. <laughs> Um, and if they're one for wanting things, like, it just doesn't matter. We will be able to take this over. Um, fantastic. That's fine. They can bring back the eye twitch, but instead they go for the unlucky witness. I think that makes more sense for sure. That's cool. Um, cool. Yeah, I'm into that. Lair of the Hydra, not a bad card for sure, but not really what we're looking for either. It could kind of go. Uh, let's do this. Since it gains extra now, um, that seems like an easy way to go. We'll attack him with both of these. Um, they're going to block with the Unlucky Witness, sure. So we still get six damage in. They get two viewed cards here. Um... Another witness and fatal. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's fine. Again, follow up Foreign Clex. Boring Clex, not Foreign Clex. Uh, is very, very good. Plus, we've got all the treasure token we need just to pump into the lair of the Hydra if we want to. Um, and keeping in mind, if they kill anything other than the Voring Clex and I guess the Avenger, uh, if they kill three out of our five creatures, um, we just get to draw cards. So if they sweep the board. We get to draw three cards, and we already have Vorinclex and the mana to kind of deal with whatever we need to deal with here. Um, my assumption is they are going to kill the Vorinclex here. Is that what this does? I don't know. This thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's actually fine. So we choose the card that we get to sacrifice here. So I'm just going to choose the little Death Toucher. This has double strike, so it really isn't that helpful anyway in this board state, and now we just get to draw a card. <laughs> so, that seems pretty good. Um, I'll trade a 2-2 for a card, especially a 2-2 that's not really doing much. Alright, cool, we did it! 
yeah <laughs> uh that was really good um that was three games i think i don't remember if it was undefeated or not we'll talk about it all right so again i'm gonna have to look back because i don't remember if we we technically for those of you who you wouldn't know this so everybody uh there was a game in the middle there but the client crashed and then by the time we had gotten back up we had forfeited the game so there was a game in between and that's causing my brain to kind of meld up but um all that to say it actually did pretty well i know we got two wins i maybe three maybe just two i don't know we'll mark it as such but uh that was a really good run for elves i like this build i like the fact that um it, it kind of handles a lot of what's in the current meta decently well of course it's not perfect sweepers are still going to be a challenge but the avenger gives you a little bit of a, a buffer uh against those kinds of decks which is great so uh, i do really like this build i thought it went relatively well one thing i would suggest is in the top slot the caretaker uh, the little like six mana four four that throws counters around but can flip over and give all your stuff hexproof might be worthwhile to have in this list uh, it just kind of annihilates the the target removal which would be pretty good um, but obviously we can outpace relatively easily as well because it's just an elf deck <laughs> uh, so I really like it guys I thought this was a blast Golgari elves kind of fun uh if you are an elves player it's good to know that standard elves still has a shot it's not tier one but it's at least fun so hopefully you guys enjoyed this thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it i love you all very much have a fantastic day i'll see you guys soon